uh, when I first started out, I was an intern. Uh, I, I worked my way all the way up the chain. Um, my very first assignment was to write a story about the birth of arena football. So I uh, was given the phone number of Jim Foster, who was the founder and inventor of the game, um, and was told to call him. And, and I did about a 30-minute interview and finally got to ask my first question around the 25-minute mark, because Jim likes to talk. Um, but he, he ran through the, the whole, you know, from, from beginning to end of how arena football came to be. Um, and as Mark stated, the, the, in 1981, he was at a, a major indoor soccer league all-star game at Madison Square Garden. Um, and he was watching this indoor soccer game, and he thought, well, if they can play soccer indoors, they can play football indoors. So he starts, he, he was a promotions manager at the NFL at the time, and he pulls out this manila envelope uh, from his briefcase and starts scribbling down you know, notes and different diagrams for what it might look like. And uh, eventually it became the blueprint for what became the Arena Football League. Um, that manila envelope is now in Canton, Ohio, at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, where it belongs. It's, it's a pretty cool piece of uh, history. Um, he, he ran through all the, the ideas that he had in his head and how uh, when he actually got to the, the putting on the game portion of it, you know, they had all these extra supplies in the arena, that, uh, like a spotlight, and they had pyro. What are we going to do with these? Well, let's use them for player intros. So it was just kind of different things, using what they had at their disposal in the arena um, to put on an entertaining show. Um, but eventually, around the 25-minute mark, he took a breath. And that's where I got to ask my one question for the interview, um, which was, what do you think is the legacy of the Arena Football League? And without missing a beat, he said, well, it's the League of Opportunity. And I really like that, because uh, the longer I work here, the, the more I realize that's absolutely what it is. Um, you think about, there are what, 120 Division I college football programs out there? Every one of those programs has a quarterback, right? And you think about how many Division II programs there are. Division III, NAIA, junior college. There are 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. That's it. Everybody has a backup. Not everybody has a third stringer anymore. So that leaves an awful lot of really talented college players without an opportunity to continue playing. Um, and that's where the AFL kind of fills that void um, because it's an opportunity to continue to get paid for your passion. Uh, this past year, we had 42 of our players, 15% of the league, uh, get invited to NFL training camps. And that's pretty cool. Uh, of those 42, 11 guys made opening day 53-man rosters, another five are on practice squads. Um, and without that opportunity to continue playing football, to continue to get game tape out there, um, to continue to, to get noticed, um, those dreams never would have been realized. Uh, and and that's, that's a pretty cool thing for me to be a part of. Because everybody comes to the AFL for one reason or another, uh, whether it's to keep playing the game that they love, whether it's to get noticed by the, the next level, whether it's because they were at the next level and told they just weren't good enough, whether it's you know, they, they screwed up their chance and now they're, they're on their second or, or their last chance. Um, everybody has a, a story, and it's my job to kind of tell those stories. And I have a lot of fun with that, but I mean, probably the, the most famous alumnus we have is Kurt Warner. Um, Kurt was in an NFL training camp. He was basically told he wasn't good enough. Came back down to Iowa, started working at a Hy-Vee grocery store, stocking shelves for $5.50 an hour. And that's when the Iowa Barnstormers called him. And three years in the AFL, uh, eventually the St. Louis Rams called, offered him a contract. The next year, he was the league MVP of the NFL and the Super Bowl MVP. And about a month ago, it was announced that his life story is going to be made into a major motion picture. None of that would have happened without the AFL just giving him a chance. And it's, it's been that league of opportunity, not just for players, but for countless others, coaches, executives. Um, Jay Gruden, the offensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals, star of Hard Knocks this year. Uh, he started out as an Arena Football League quarterback, then became one of our greatest coaches uh, before he got the shot with the Bengals. Ryan Grigson, general manager of the Indianapolis Colts began his professional career as a scout for the Buffalo Destroyers in the AFL. So it, it's provided opportunities not just for players, but coaches, general managers, executives, to continue to stay involved with the game that they love, get paid for their passion, and you know, just enjoy their work. I mean, because that's, that's really what it's all about. I wake up every morning and, and I get to talk about football. Yeah, it ain't bad. <laughs>